Hi and welcome, my name is Ben Howard. I'm going to show you how you can use Power Automate to sync Microsoft Planner plans with Power BI. So why are we doing this? Well, I've already got a Planner template out there that takes the exported plans out of Planner into an Excel file and brings them into Power BI. And lots of people love that, but they said, hey Ben, that's really good, but can we automate that? And I had to think about it for a while and over the last couple of months uh, during non-work time, I've come up with a solution. So a big thumbs up for the solution. So what is the solution? Well, we start off with planner plans. We put them into flow. We then store the data in five tables in an Excel file. And then the Excel file is stored in SharePoint, of course. And because it's stored in SharePoint, then we can synchronize that Excel file and set up a scheduled sync to bring the data into Power BI. So it's really two portions of this. This is the first portion, getting the data from Planner into Excel. There's a few things we need to think about in order to do that. The first is that each plan that we want to synchronize has got to be associated with an Office 365 group via Microsoft Teams. We need to do that because each of the segments of the flow in Microsoft Flow will go and query Microsoft Teams and say, hey, what groups have you got associated with this team? And then we can say what plans are associated with that group. So that's the first thing. We then need to download the relevant files from GitHub. So uh, you can see the URL on the screen. We won't go too much into that. We need to upload one of the files we download from GitHub, which is a blank Excel file. Now, when I say it's blank, it's got five sheets in there. Each sheet has a table. The tables are actually blank. That's where we're going to store the plan data, the tasks data, the user data, the assignments data, and the buckets data. So we upload that Excel file into a SharePoint document library. We import then the Power Automate flow so that, uh, and then we configure that flow of course, so that it points to the Excel file in the SharePoint document library. And then we test, 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 and then test a little bit more until we are happy that that flow is running successfully. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so where are we? Well, we're here, we've got Planner data, we're in GitHub. So search for Ben Howard, Planner to Power BI with Power Automate. Um, there's a few files that are on there, but of course you're going to go and you're going to click code and then just download the zip or download the files individually. We can see we've got um, a flow import here. We have a Power BI template and then we've got our Excel file. So I've already downloaded the files and they are available to be seen here. Okay, all fairly simple. Let's do the first thing, which is go into Planner and either create a new plan, so we'll see this working live, and then also show you how you can associate a team with a plan. So I can just click in New Planner here. We will call this um, RLS, and we will go and create our RLS plan. Now that's going to create for me in the background an RLS group, of course. Uh, I'm just going to add in a task. We'll call this RLS uh, task one. Uh, we'll assign a user to this. So I'm already part of a group. But if we were to sign, assign another user, let's say Maria, she's a non-member, then I'm going to get this opportunity to assign and add Maria to the group so that's okay let's just go and add in another task in here uh, we will call this rls task 2 okay um there in the to-do bucket that's all going to work fine what we need to do now is we need to go to teams and associate that group with a team so i'm going to click here to join or create a team you could just create a team from scratch and that would work as well OK, so I could create a team from scratch or from a group or team. Well, we've got an existing group or team. It's a Microsoft 365 group. And if we scroll to the bottom, there's my RLS uh, group. So I'm going to create or use that team to create 
my teams team. There we are down at the bottom, RLS. That's all I need to do. I could, of course, created the team directly from within teams or created the group directly from within teams and then associated that group with a plan. That would be fine. That's all I need to do in teams now. So I'm just going to close that off. What we need to do then is we need to take our Excel file and store it somewhere in SharePoint. So let's just go and create a new site. We'll create a team site. I'm just going to call it RLS again. And from there, we can just click next. OK, that's going to finish creating that, which is done. That's really quick. Once we've done that, we can navigate there. And within the documents library, I can then slowly, maybe later, do that. I can upload a file or I can just drag a file in, actually, which would probably be a better thing to do. Well, here's the folder. So I'll take planner tasks from flow. That's what the file is called. We'll just have a quick look at that file once that's loaded up. OK, so this is just an Excel file. Doesn't matter what you call the file. Quite happy to rename this. The important thing is that the file contains five tables. So I've got a table called plan ID. In fact, if we hover over here or go into here, you'll see that it's called plan underscore table. Sorry, we've got a similar thing for buckets. We've got one for tasks, we have one for assignments, and we have one for team members. Okay, They all have sensible names. So, for example, the team members one is called user underscore table. It's very important that you do not change the table names. That will cause you pain if you do. Okay, so I'm going to leave that open for now because we'll come and use that. We'll see data getting populated into there. So what we now need to do is go into Flow. So if we just open up Flow or, of course, Power Automate, then we can import the flow that we'd previously saved or that you downloaded from GitHub. So let's go to My Flows. And within My Flows, we have the Import button here. And we can go and choose the exported zip file for that flow. OK, this is the flow name. It's called Add Planner Tasks to Excel Online Spreadsheet, blah, 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 dot zip. So let's open that up. OK, we've got a few configuration items that we need to think about as part of the Import, I need to say whether I'm going to import this or create as new. I'm going to create as new, and I'm just going to call this one YouTube so you can see it. We could spell YouTube. OK, we'll save that. And then I need to configure the connection for each resource type. So we'll just modify each of these and choose effectively the same account for them all. Once that's done, I can click Import, and I'm going to get that new flow imported into Power Automate. OK, that looks to have been successful. Let's go back to My Flows. We should see it as part of the list there. Here it is. Now, no, it's not. Let's just refresh that. Here's the flow now. We can see that it's the one appended with the name YouTube. Now we need to go and enable that flow or turn it on. So we'll turn it on. That's great. And then very importantly, we need to edit it. This flow has been set up to work on my system, not your system. And so we need to edit the flow to say exactly where is that Power BI, sorry, where is that Excel file stored? You can see that the flow runs every day at 11 o'clock and then it kicks off one, two, three, four, five separate branches. OK, each branch effectively runs through a very similar process. In each branch, we need to define the Excel file that we're going to look at 
because what we do is we find the Excel file, we find the table in the Excel file, we delete, we list all of the rows in the table, and then for every row in the table, we delete the row so we get rid of any old data because if you've deleted a bucket, you don't want to see it anymore. If you've deleted a task, you don't want to see it anymore. If you've deleted a plan, you don't want to see it anymore. So we get rid of all of the old data and then we have another area where we write all the new data in. So this needs to be done for every branch and it needs to be done three times for each branch. I'm going to do the first one. So we're going to list the rows present in the task table. Now, what we're doing here for the Excel uh, action of listing rows present in the task table is we are giving the location of the Excel file. Mine is in SharePoint or mine was in SharePoint site tables in Excel, but it is no longer. OK, we've just created something called RLS. So I can either scroll down to the group called RLS or I can scroll down to the SharePoint site called RLS Team Sites, OPQRS. OK, now you can see that it has not yet come through. Sometimes it takes a while for the SharePoint site to populate in this drop down list. So if you're not seeing that, then you you can use the group. So we'll choose the group um, RLS and I'll choose the group RLS Team Site because that's the team site where the that was the name of the SharePoint site. So I'm going to use that group in specific specifically. We then choose the document folder. So remember, it was documents. And then we choose from the document folder, the name of a file planner tasks from flow. And then from within there, we'll go and enumerate the table task table. So that's the first one done. Now it's worth just scrolling through each of these. We're then going to delete a row. Excel, where are we going to delete that row from? Well, we're going to take the group, which we called RLS team site. The document library is documents, but it may well want to verify that. I typically do. The folder name is planner tasks from flow. Seems to have found that. And the table, actually, let's just see if we can find that. Nope. So the table, planner tasks from flow. Now we've selected that, it will go and enumerate the table. The table is the task table, OK? So this first branch is all to do with tasks. Once we have deleted any all the rows, then we go and list the teams. Then we go and find all the teams. Then we list the plans, for that group in a team. And then for each plan, we list the tasks. And then for each task, guess what? We do something with Excel, we add the row into the table. Which Excel file do we want to deal with? Well, this is a bit dull, but it's the same thing. We set it up. So it's going to be groups, RLS, team site. It's going to be in the documents folder. It's going to be in the file. So documents folder, thank you very much. It's going to be in the file planner tasks from flow. And the table is going to be the tasks table. And then you see here, I've matched some things that we're going to write in. You shouldn't need to change any of those. So there's three areas where you have to change uh, for each branch. So I'm going to do the same for the other branches. I'm going to pause the video and then we'll come back once that's done. OK, so that took about five minutes. You can see that for each branch I've selected, wherever wherever there's anything to do with Excel, the location to be the group RLS team site, et cetera, et cetera. This is the users table, so it always of the users branch. So we are always using the users table. This is the assignments table branch, so we're using the assignments table. A little more complex for the assignments table. We have another nested row in here, but we're, we're down here. So you just need to keep expanding until you see the relevant area. So that's the assignments table or the assignments branch. This is the plans branch. And the first one we did, of course, was the uh, tasks and then buckets. So once this is done, I can click save. Once it's saved, I can click test. OK, so test will run the flow 
and I've got the opportunity to run this manually, so let's test that. When I start testing this, of course, we can begin to run the flow. Once it's done, we can then go and view the flow running, so it'll show us the flow is running here. As that's running, I'm just going to open up and bring in this uh, view here. So this is my list of plans. You can see that list of plans is being populated as we speak, as the flow runs. OK, and there's my plan called RLS. Now, if we scroll over here and we go and have a look at the tasks, we can see the tasks is still running. That was the plans that we saw. So let's just go over and have a look at those tasks. So in tasks, we've got a bit of a bigger uh, bucket, but you can see those tasks coming in here um, into the table. So that works very well. We'll just let this flow fully complete. OK, so that's run successfully. Let's go back and just rerun that. So let's run it again, because now we've got some data in there. I want to show you that the first thing it does is delete all of the data out of the existing tables. So this flow is running now. We can have a look at that. And as we no, that's running. There's the task table and there's the items being deleted from the task table. So we go into each table, we delete the existing rows in the table. And then once we've deleted them, we go back and list everything in Teams and add them into the table again. So let's carry on with the PowerPoint while that flow works. The second portion of this is to take the data that's in Excel in our SharePoint file and load that into Power BI. So what do we need to do for that? Well, the first thing we need to do is open the Power BI template file and enter the web URL of the Excel file. We then publish a Power BI report in the usual way and set the scheduled refresh to be sometime after the flow has been scheduled to run. So let's just open up Power BI and, and start that. OK, here you can see the tasks. They've all been deleted. New tasks are coming in. So if we open up Power BI, in fact, we can go over to our folder. Here we have the Power BI report. It's at the moment version 0.1.pbit. So we'll click on there and that will open up uh, a flavor of uh, the latest Power BI um, application on my desktop. So what happens with the pbit file is that Power BI opens and I ask you for a parameter and the parameter is the what I call the Excel file web URL. It's in this format here and it describes in the blurb here how to go and get the file. But let's just go and do that or rather how to get the web URL. Now remember our Excel file that we stored in SharePoint? Of course you do. To get the web URL, what we have to do is we have to open that in the desktop app. So let's just open that in Excel. Once that's opened in Excel, then we can click on the file button here and then on the info tab and we can click here where it says copy path. Once we've done that, we can close down Excel and in fact, we can finish with this uh, page as well. Now, we want to then paste the path that we copied into this URL here, but we want to get rid of the portion at the end, which you can see says question mark web equals one. So I just backspace on that and the parameter should just now finish with dot XLSX. We can then click load. Now, what this will do, of course, is it will then go and load the query from that Excel file. You can see we load in four tables. Uh, or you can see that actually we visually load in four tables. We load in the five in the background. We show you four and then actually I hide all of those and you just see a single table called tasks table. So let's just let that load up and the Power BI report refresh. OK, once that's loaded, we have an about page, but really the page that we're interested in is this planner tasks page. You can see the fields list here, or rather the 
fields well. I've got a single query called task table, which I load with lots of data in there. So Power BI loads up. We have planner tasks and in there we've got various visualizations. I've tried to put everything on a single page for you. So we've got some filters regarding progress. We've got a filters for the plans and there's our RLS plan. We have filters for buckets. We have filters, of course, for users and people who have got assignments and we've got some filters for labels. Obviously, we have a full interactivity, as you would expect in Power BI. Just one other visual that I'm always rather fond of, of course, is the decomposition tree. So I just thought I would put in. So I just thought I'd put this one in here so that you can decompose your planet tasks. Let's just go back to this page and then publish the report. So whilst that's publishing, let's go into Power BI and select the YouTube workspace. So you can see the Power BI report, Planner Report V01 is there. Let's just go and set up a scheduled refresh for that report. So if you need to, you might need to enter the data source credentials. When you edit the credentials, it's going to be OAuth2. And we can just cancel that because our credentials are OK. In terms of a scheduled refresh, we will select to keep the data up to date and I will add in another time. So the time I'm going to choose is going to be 1 a.m. because the flow runs at 11 p.m. and I want to give the flow time to run in order for the Power BI report to then update that data set. So if I go back to report just to see if we can refresh that automatically, I'll just click on a little refresh now button and you can see that's going away and refreshing and it should do that within a few seconds. It's done that. So let's just go and view the report. So there you have it. I've taken you through the process of using Microsoft Flow to update an Excel file in SharePoint and connect to that Excel file using Power BI. So our Power BI file always gives us up to date information about our planner plans. If you want to know more about auto refreshing, please do check out my YouTube channel because I've got some videos on that. And if you do like what you've seen, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much.